let's get right into our topic for the day. This young man hails from where? Dallas. He's known as what? Backbone imposter. He's also known what? You know, this gentleman has two master's degrees. Uh, he's faithful to his church. He's always there helping out. You know, and the story that I love, he said, man, I'm just talking about, I'm going to stand, I'm going to lay on my, I'm not going to lay on my bed till I get to my next motion. But more important, I think one of the things he said to me that really will, will resonate through me for the rest of my life, he said he was at home working from home on his computer. That's right, Kathleen Wim. And his computer, he had to go to the restroom. So, you know, when you go to the restroom, your fingers are not moving. He went to the restroom, he came back, his phone was ringing. And it, it was his boss asking, Sam Foster, are you okay? And Sam Fox said, yeah, I'm okay. Man, for crying out loud, I just went to the bathroom. And the guy said, whoa, because your keys were not moving. That could be any one of y'all on here. He's, at a, he's a grown man. Without further ado, our dear friend, Mr. Backbone Imposter, the great Mr. Sam Foster. Thomas, thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you, everyone, for being on the call. Mr. Thomas, once again, thank you for your platform. Uh, Mr. Jabri, as always, thank you for being behind the scenes, connecting all the dots. Um, I want to go ahead and get started. I'm going to try to be as brief, as brief as possible, because as you know, I'm on this whirlwind tour, uh, trying to heat up Texas as hot as I can get it. So um, I'm moving and grooving. Okay, uh, today I think I'll be in Arlington at an event. Um, a word to the wise, a word to the wise. Let's try to find something in your town, in your city, or in your state that you can connect to. Any kind of event, look in the paper, look on Google. There's something in your town or in your city or in your state that you can connect to because everybody's getting back outside and they're always having something in your area. You just have to know how to plug into it. And there's no special hocus pocus to it. You just have to plug into it, all right? With that said, if you guys are taking notes, if you're taking notes and you're not driving, I want you to put this in your notebook. This is gonna be part four, and I think this is the last week of me doing um, Quest to Call. It's the end of the month. Uh, it's a holiday weekend, so I'm outside. I'm outside here. Join me, okay? The title of the day is going to be Trading Places. Yep, 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 yep. Trading Places. Yeah, yeah, yeah. May sound familiar to some of you old heads on the call. Trading Places was a movie that was done by Eddie, Eddie Murphy back in the day. Trading Places. And the reason why I say that is because we often want to trade places with who we are. If we didn't, we wouldn't, we wouldn't be on this call. We wouldn't be trying to elevate ourselves in ACN. So trading places. What trading places, what do you mean? Trading time for dollars and getting the tip card, a paycheck. Trading places. We want to get to a point now, ladies and gentlemen, where we trade places with ourselves. We trade places with ourselves. We want to get higher than where we are. So trading places, trading places, trading places going somewhere, I'm going somewhere. Trust the process, trust the process. Now, just a little while ago when I told you guys to plug into your city, plug into your area, that's important. That's important because everybody's back out now. You have to want to plug into your area. Nothing secret about it, plug into your area, okay? With that said, this concept of trading places, uh, kind of struck me a little bit. I had a couple of other things that I was going to say, but as always, I had another plan, had to pivot, had to redirect. So my redirection today is trading places because I, what I want everybody to understand is I want us to, 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 to put ourselves in a position where we, we get out of trading time for dollars and getting a tip card a paycheck. Yeah, Mr. Thomas is right. Yeah, I got a, I got a lot of degrees, but at the end of the day, the, the, the degrees can sometimes stall you. And I'm going to tell you why. I'm going to get a little real for a second, ladies and gentlemen. It'll stall you because 
I've often got on a job and because I do have all these degrees, I was held down, held back, pushed to the side, hated on. Because nine times out of 10, my boss didn't have my educational background. Now they may have, may have had a degree in something, but they may not have had the level that I had. So if they didn't have the level that I had, they may have secretly hated on me. Think about that, ladies and gentlemen. Yeah, I'm going to get a BS, fine, no problem. Well, I'm going to get a master's, okay. But if you, no disrespect to a degree, but if you went and got the BS and didn't work, then you went and got the master's didn't work, then I get people saying, well, I'm going to get a PhD. Well, uh, no disrespect to the PhD, but watch yourself on that. Because a lot of times you'll find yourself paying for a lot of things that you don't use. Or you got all these degrees, but you may have a PhD, but not the kind of PhD you may think you may be. Your PhD may stand for poor, hungry, and desperate. Yeah, 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 yeah. Let that sit for a second. No disrespect to the PhD, but my point to you guys is when you get all these degrees, Let's make sure that we put ourselves on a level to where we have a backup plan. What's the backup plan? An ACN, where you have residual income, where you're really trading places. So you're not trading time for dollars and getting a tip called a paycheck. Where you really trading places with yourself. You're altering yourself a little bit. You're giving yourself a better platform. Because I don't care if you're from jail or Yale. Anybody can do ACN. Just have a good work ethic. You can do ACN. ACN is doable all day long. Trade places, ladies and gentlemen. Trade places is psychological more than anything. Trade places. Do you guys realize, and I'm going to give you a fun fact. Maybe not so fun. But watch this. The majority of people right now in this country alone has a second a third job. I'm going to let that sit for a second. The majority of people in this country, ladies and gentlemen, not have a first job. They have a second or third job. Now, I know I'm not lying because if I was lying, I wouldn't be peeking so many people day to day that actually tell me, oh, I got a second job. Oh, this is my side hustle. Oh, this is my gas money. Well, uh, no disrespect to gas money, but uh, <laughs> you, you may want to rob Fort Knox in a minute because uh, <laughs> out here in Texas, gas almost $10 a gallon. <laughs> so uh, <laughs> we, can, we can cut all that gibberish about... Uh, the side hustle, the, this just gas money. Because right about now, it takes you mortgaging a, a second home and giving up your firstborn to even put a gallon of gas in your car. So, whoa, wait a minute. We may be on to some, ladies and gentlemen, if that's the case. And they tell me by August, it's projected that gas will be almost $10 a gallon. I don't know. But that's a lot for a gallon of gas. I put $20 in my car a couple of days ago and my needle barely moved. It barely moved. I got mad. I got absolutely upset, ladies and gentlemen. I'm sitting in my car. I couldn't even move. It took me two, three minutes to get out of park because I couldn't understand what is the world coming to when you can sit in a car and put $20 in and your needle barely moves, that's $20. So ladies and gentlemen, if you're on this call and you're not an ACN, I have a young man that's supposed to be on the call. Now I met last night. I want this to resonate not only to people that are in ACN, but to people that are not in ACN. Because this is going to be relevant going forward in the next couple of months. Because if gas is gonna be almost $10 a gallon, I'm almost sure it's gonna get up to around that mark. Because why? It's summertime. 
So you already know how they play games in the summertime. They raise the prices up because it's summertime. So let's just be realistic for a second. That's not far-fetched to say it's going to get close to that mark. Then you got all these different little holidays, the 4th of July and everything like that. And God knows the cost of bread is almost <laughs> mortgaging the house. You know, think about that, ladies and gentlemen. When you walk in Walmart, it's almost like going to a funeral. Think about it. <laughs> Trust me, I know. I'm in Walmart a lot, <laughs> peaking. It's like going to a funeral. I mean, you go in there, man, if, if you don't have no financial assistance, you may need some by the time you walk out the store. Because the prices are doubling and tripling. I mean, think about it. A bag of potato chips may cost you five dollars. And that's the grab bag, not the large. Think about it for a minute. It's a lot going on, ladies and gentlemen. It's a lot going on. But if we're thinking about trading places, truth be told, in ACN, we have a leverage system like no other. Because now we don't have to go, if you're in ACN and you get the residual income, you're not working for the residual income. The income system starts working for you. That's trading places, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> I'm going somewhere. The mad scientist is going somewhere. <laughs> trading places. So this weekend, when you guys are out peeking, when you guys are out talking to people, when you guys are out socializing, I think it's Memorial Day of the I don't know what it is. It's one of these holidays they put together. And it's all about income. It's all about raising the in, raising their the, the 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 societal money when you put a holiday in place. No disrespect to veterans or anything like that. But many of these holidays, no disrespect, are financially driven, especially during the summertime. That's a nugget for somebody. They're financially driven. So, in other words, if it's not Christmas, then that's financially driven too. They put together other holidays so you guys can spend more money. Now, my thing is, let's trade places on that for a second. If that's going to be the case, if that's going to be the case, why don't we do this? Why don't we leverage ourselves a lot more in ACN by talking to a lot more people? That way our averages goes up and we have an opportunity to allow people to make money or save money at the same time, since we have the system that allows us to do both. That's a thought for somebody. Going forward, you have individuals on this call that make a lot of residual income. Now, I'm not saying that they don't think about money and they don't think about, oh, these prices are getting high, but they're not thinking about it like a common person because I know they're looking at, looking at these residuals saying, Oh, oh, this hit next month. Oh, this hit on the 15th. Oh, this hit on the 1st. So I'd rather be in their shoes getting the residual income coming in week after week after month after month after year after year. Why? Because everybody that you come in contact with is doing the services that we provide to produce residual income. So to be totally honest with you guys, and I know I'm going to drop a bomb when I say this, but aside from uh, going to heaven, we look like we're recession proof. Think about that for a second. We pretty much recession proof. But why do you say that, Sam? Because we have services that everybody have to do. That's why they're essential, okay? And since we have services that everybody has to do and they're essential, and we provide them at the wholesale level instead of the retail level, why are you not talking to more people? I'm going to stand right here. I, 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 I'm a, Rick, I'm going to stand right here. I'm going to stand right here, Cap, Kathleen Williams. I'm going to stand right here. I'm going to hold my position. Why are we not talking to more people? Because you know they're desperate and desperate in a good way. 
How do you know that, Sam? Because I talk to people every day. I talk to people every day, and I know they're desperate. They may be a little scared, but they're desperate. And going to your famous places like a Walmart or a mall, they walk around, and a lot of them walk around the mall window shopping. They're not picking up nothing. They window shopping uh, are returning something. Yeah, Rick, they returning something. Because they realize if they buy another thing out of a mall, they may not eat. And that's how tough it's getting. But one thing I do know, Mr. Thomas, one thing I do know, they have to pay these essential services. Watch that. The young people got a phrase that way. They have to pay these essential services. Wait a minute, wait a minute, no, 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 no. wait a minute. They have to pay these essential services, Marie B. Sensational, down in Florida. They have to pay these essential services. Way up in Canada, they have to pay these essential services. Uh -uh, uh uh way over in Japan, I can't go. They have to pay these, wait a minute. Way in Japan, they still paying these essential services. In California, they're paying these essential services. Watch this, they have to pay it. And the last time I checked, they'll pay these essential services before they do anything else. Because the light bill, the light company doesn't care. You could be talking on the phone and you didn't pay that light bill and they cutting, they cutting you off. The phone had to go off until you pay the bill. And if we provide these services for 29 years and counting, I don't know now. I don't know. Somebody need to let me know. Come on up, Dale Ransom. Come on, Jekko, I see you. Yeah, yeah. Adrian, I see you. They all have to pay these services, ladies and gentlemen. This is not a joke. Warning, warning, this is not a test. This is not a test. This is real. They have to pay these services. We provide the services that they have to pay. No if, ands, or buts. If, ands, or buts about it. So if you're wavering on something of who to talk to, talk to everybody. They have to do the same thing. It doesn't matter. Talk about give, getting yourself an energy boost. Talk about giving yourself an encouragement. No, 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 everybody's already doing the service. Oh, it's just to get real. Mr. Ishmael, way over there in Hollywood, California, believe it or not, Tinseltown, they have to pay these services. Dave Cole, they have to pay these services. Come on now. Jason Diggory, they have to pay these services. Marie Codd over in Fresh Note. Marcia, they have to pay these services. So my question is, why don't we continue to trade places? We shouldn't have to think like the average person. Why? Because we don't have what the average person has. We have a gold man in our hand, ladies and gentlemen, a, a, a gold man. If you really think about it, a gold man. You can't get around us. You can't outdo us. And our track record of 29 years speaks for itself. Now, last week, I presented uh, with the help of uh, Mr. Jabri Clemens, the comp plan. It's, it, it, in its essential state. So you guys can go back to that call and look at that comp plan. Anybody who's hesitant on talking to somebody, just throw them the comp plan. Have them look at that comp plan. Have them realistically look at that comp plan and ask them to call you back and tell you where can they go to get a comp plan that pays out like that. See, you guys have to challenge yourself. See, I understand what's going on a lot of times with us, uh, team. We're not challenging ourselves. We're not challenging ourselves to do stuff like that, to stand on the edge and tip ourselves over. Because if you send that information to anybody you're prospecting, I want you to challenge them and say, call me back and let me know where they're doing that at. Watch this, watch this, ladies and gentlemen. Watch this, Mr. Thomas. I'm getting ready to do something. I'm getting ready to do something to help somebody. You don't have to send me a check. I'm going to help you. Watch this. I want you to ask them, ask them now, where can they go to get that kind of money in a payout? Watch this. Residually. Residually, where can they go and get that kind of money in a payout? Not a paycheck. Watch this, watch this. 
not a paycheck. I want you to use the right verbiage. Say, where can you go to get that kind of payout residually? Because most of them don't even know what residual is. So you may have to break that down too. So when they do conversate back with you, they're going to really be speechless. You're probably going to hear crickets. Why? Because nobody can do it. Nobody can do it. And when you say that, ladies and gentlemen, you have to ask them, with all these prices going up, with all these prices going up, and you got a second or a third job, how long do you think you're going to be able to keep that up? Because if you're going to keep trading time for dollars, the prices are going to get harder as they're going to get. You may not have time to go to sleep. Now, I'm going to give you guys a little story because I believe in giving, uh, giving examples. I was getting ready to head out to um, Lake Tahoe. I get in the Uber at, uh, I think I got in the Uber about 4 o'clock. Get ready to head to Dallas Fort Worth Airport going out to uh, Lake Tahoe. Thank you, Mr. Thomas. You ready to head out to Lake Tahoe? I'm in, I'm in the Uber, peaking the Uber drive. And uh, I noticed that the uh, Uber driver seemed like he was kind of tired. Seemed like he was kind of uh, heavy, for lack of a better word. He pulled over to the uh, gas station to get some gas. He said, you mind if I pull over and get some gas? I said, no, nah, I don't mind at all. I'm thinking to myself, as long as long you don't charge me for it, you know, because like a cab, you know, it's still running. So he said, no, nah, I'm not charging you for it. I said, okay, cool. We started laughing. I wasn't playing. I was serious. Watch that part. But uh, he, he started laughing. He uh, went and got the gas. So he gave, he brought back, he brought me a water back, you know, I guess as a consolation prize. Long story short. We going down the street, so I spark a little small conversation with him. You know I'm in an Uber, so you have to be at least 10 minutes, 10, 15 minutes or less, especially with these Uber drivers because they come and going so fast. And you want your, your verbiage and your conversation to be minimal anyway because you, when you're peeking, you want to leave room for element of surprise and for you know those individuals to have a guessing game in their head about exactly what we do. So I gave him a short overview, got his name, got his number, of course, Dialed it while I was in the car, so it did go off. So that's my that's my MO. So I did have his name and number. That's a key for somebody. Dial the number while you're in front of them to make sure you got the right number. So that happened. Okay. So as I'm talking to him, he gets to open it up to me. Not only was he a he an Uber driver, but he said, I just got off my job at Amazon. I'm like, wait a minute. This guy just got off an Amazon job. Now he driving Uber. I said, buddy, how long you gonna be driving tonight? He said, all night. I'm thinking to myself, my God, he's got an Amazon job and I know they grind you at Amazon. He get off of Amazon, he go back to another job and he drives all night for Uber. Now he picked me up at about two in the morning. He said he got off of Amazon at 12. I said, well, when you plan on getting off? He said, uh, I guess when I hit my quota, wait a minute, what quota? Man, you're shooting in the dark, man, and you're blind. Wait a minute. You're doing a whole lot of working. You're doing a whole lot of trading time for dollars, and you really get a tip called a paycheck. No dis disrespect to Uber or Amazon, but I know for a fact Uber's grinding you because no disrespect to Uber, but you do realize you're using your own car. So this is what I told him. Let me give you guys a trading uh, places perspective. This is what I told him. This is how I peaked it. I said, you know you're using your own car, right? He said, what? I said, yeah. I said, what if you have a flat tire? Uh-oh. Uh-oh. I said, what if you have a flat tire? Then you got to pay to get the tire fixed. You got to pay for the car to go in the shop. And then Uber don't call you until you're ready to roll again. And they don't pay your insurance. And they don't give you medical dinner or anything like that. So you really trade time for dollars and really getting a tip called a paycheck. Wait a minute, ladies and gentlemen. No disrespect, but I think that's borderline slave labor. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I had to tell the truth. 
And Uber takes no account for anything. No overhead. They don't do anything. They just tip you and you drive the car. And that's how a lot of these jobs are starting to get now. No insurance, no nothing. You're just on a gig, a gig. You're gigging. Some of us are getting too old to gig. Think about it. We're getting way too old to gig now. We need to be getting on this residual income. So we're not gigging. We don't have a side hustle. We don't have any of that thing. We don't even have a first job. We have a residual income situation. That's what I'm looking for. I'm looking to fire a boss. So every day I go out, my mentality is, do you want to fire your boss? Do you want to fire your boss? Do you want to fire your boss? Because if anything, that's shock treatment. It's going to be shock treatment when you first say it. Then you say, what do you, they say, what do you mean? I said, do you want to stop trading time for dollars and getting a tip called a paycheck? Now that's a conversation piece. Do you want to stop trading time for dollars and getting a tip called a paycheck? Trading places. Ladies and gentlemen, I told you I was not going to be long. I just wanted to put that in your mind going forward this weekend. Let's go out, ladies and gentlemen. Let's do what we do. This has been my final installment of my series, Motivation to Elevation. I want to thank you guys for being humble enough to get on the call and listen to this old boy right here. But I'm out like a light. Thank you guys. Love you.